Hello, everybody. Welcome to Storytime at the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. Today's story comes to us from the Native American tradition and somewhere in the Plains area, the Great Plains, right in the middle of the United States, of what is now the United States. So this is a Native American story from kind of that general area. And this is the story of Jumping Mouse. Once long ago, there was a young mouse, and he lived with his family in a little, uh, a little grassy area near a forest, and just across the, the river from them, there was a desert. And every night, when they were getting ready to go to bed every night, they would get mm -hmm. together and they would tell stories. And there were lots of stories that they would tell to each other, but the story that this little mouse loved the best was the story of the far off land. The far off land was green and it was beautiful and there was always lots of food to eat and plenty of water to drink and it sounded wonderful. And the mouse just really, really, really wanted to go to the far off land. And one day he decided he just, he just couldn't live anymore without seeing the far off land for himself. And so he decided to set out. And so the next day, before the sun even came up in the sky, he set out for the far off land. Well, as he hopped along, pretty soon he came to the edge of the river. And when he looked at the river, it was so big and so wide and so deep and it ran so fast that he was, he was afraid. And he said, well, how am I going to cross this? And suddenly he heard a voice from nearby say, why don't you try swimming? And he looked around and he spotted a small frog and he said, I, I, I don't know what is swimming. And the frog said, well, this is swimming. And the frog jumped into the river and started to swim. And the little mouse looked at him and he watched what he was doing. And he said, I, I don't think I can do that. And the frog hopped out of the river again and he said, well, why do you need to cross the river anyway? And the little mouse said, well, you see, I've always heard these stories about the far off land and I just really, really, really want to see it for myself. So I'm going to get there. I don't know how to get there, but I know it's that way and I'm going to keep going until I get there. And the frog said, well, as long as you keep hope in your heart, I am sure you will make it there. What is your name, little mouse? Well, I am a mouse. That is not a name. I am Magic Frog. That is my name. I will give you a name. I will give you a name that will help you on your journey to the far off land. I name you jumping mouse and jumping mouse he felt a tingling in his back legs and they they felt kind of funny so he gave a little hop and do you know when he gave that little hop he hopped twice as high as he had ever hopped before and he came down and he was rather startled and he turned around and he looked at his back legs and they were bigger and stronger and longer than they had been before he said wow Thank you very much, Magic Frog. That, that will definitely help me get to the far off land much quicker, but I still don't know how to cross the river. And the Magic Frog said, come with me, jump on this leaf right here and I will help you get across the river. Do not lose the hope in your heart, Jumping Frog Mouse, and you will find the far off land. And so Jumping Mouse hopped onto the leaf he almost hopped over it because he still wasn't quite used to his new legs. He hopped onto the leaf and 
Magic Frog pushed the leaf across the river while he swam. And when he got off on the other side, he turned around and Jumping Mouse said, Thank you, Magic Frog. Thank you very much. And then he turned and he began to hop across the desert. Now, if you've ever been to a desert, you know that it's very dry and it's very hot and there's not a whole lot of shade. And Jumping Mouse was very frightened. There were shadows in the sky and they frightened him. He, was, he, he knew they were dangerous. And so he hopped about trying to find the places he could hide from the shadows in the sky and as much food as he could find and as much water as he could find. It was a very dangerous and difficult journey, but he kept hope alive in his heart and he knew that someday he would get to see the far off land. Well, one day as he hopped along, he came upon a little stream. And so he started to follow the stream because it, it was good water and it was going the way he needed to go. And as he hopped along the stream, he came upon a berry bush. And under the berry bush was a fat old mouse. And the fat old mouse looked at Jumping Mouse and he said, you have very odd back legs. And Jumping Mouse said, well, they were a gift from Magic Frog to help me get to the far off lands. And the fat old mouse looked at him and said, the far off land, why would you want to go there? And Jumping Mouse said, well, because I have dreamed of it and I want to see it and I, it's supposed to be so very beautiful. And the fat old mouse said, dreams. I had dreams once. I dreamed to see the far off land, but all I ever got to was desert. And Jumping Mouse said, well, I'm going to keep trying until I see the far off land. Because see, Magic Frog promised me that if I keep hope alive in my heart, I will make it. And the fat old mouse said, well, that's fine, but why would you want to go farther than here? We have everything we need right here. Good water, a bush to, 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 to have a, a hole under, and the bush makes berries, so we have food. Why don't you just stay here? And Jumping Mouse said, well, I am very tired. I think, if you don't mind, I will stay here for a little while, but not forever. I, I, I have to go on and find the far off land. And so Jumping Mouse stayed with the old fat old mouse for, for a couple of days and they ate and they slept and they slept and they ate. And one day jumping mouse went down to the stream to get a drink. And when he looked in the stream, he realized that he was beginning to look fat, just like the fat old mouse. And he remembered suddenly that I was not going to stay here forever. I'm going to the far off land. I need to go. And as he turned to go, he saw suddenly that there was a stick that had fallen across the stream and it had gotten stuck. And now the snake that lived on the other side that the fat old mouse had warned him about, that snake, he had never crossed the stream before because he was afraid of water, but the stick was there and the stick would allowed the snake to cross the stream. Oh no! Jumping Mouse turned around very quickly and he ran back to the berry bush. But when he got back, the hole under the bush was empty and it smelled funny. It smelled like snake. And so Jumping Mouse sadly turned to go. He knew his friend was gone. <sighs> My poor friend. He lost the hope in his heart. And... He never made it to the far off land. But now, now I am going to go on. And so he turned away and he began hopping again towards the far off land, across the desert. And before too many days, he came to a large grassy plain with tall grasses everywhere. And as he looked out, he saw a rock, not too far away, a very large rock, and he thought, I can go there and I can rest in the shade of that large rock and the shadows in the sky will not see me. And I can have a little bit of a sleep because by this time he was getting rather tired. Well, as Jumping Mouse got closer to that large rock, he discovered that it was not a rock at all. It was in fact a large shaggy bison. Well, Jumping Frog was a little frightened because he was a very big animal. 
But as he got a little closer, he saw that that bison was crying. And he was sighing. <sighs> and he was crying. And Jumping Mouse came up a little closer and he said, Excuse me, Mr. Bison, but, um, whatever could be wrong? You, why are you laying here and crying and acting as if you're dying? And the bison said, because I am dying. I drank from the wrong water and it was poisoned. And now I can't see anymore. And if I can't see, then I can't find the sweet grass to eat and the water to drink and the safe places to sleep. And so I'm just lying here waiting to die. Well, Jumping Mouse, he felt rather sad that such a majestic creature was just going to die. He said, well, Magic Frog gave me strong hind legs when she named me Jumping Mouse. And my magic is not as strong as hers, but perhaps I can do a little something. Mr. Bison, I name you Eyes of a Mouse. And as soon as he said it, Jumping Mouse heard the bison snort for joy and stand up. But Jumping Mouse he couldn't see the bison stand up because he had given the bison his own eyesight. He couldn't see anymore. Well, the bison, he was so happy to be able to see. He said, you are little jumping mouse, but you are mighty and you have given me a great gift. Now, if you will walk beneath me, I will take you to the mountains on your way to the far off land and the shadows of the sky will not be able to see you. And so Jumping Mouse said, well, thank you, eyes of a mouse. I would be happy if you would help me along my route. And so the eyes of a mouse stood up and he started to walk and Jumping Mouse hopped along underneath him to the rhythm of his hooves all the way to the edge of the mountains. And Eyes of a Mouse said, Jumping Mouse, you cannot see. I cannot go any further, for I am a creature of the plains and I cannot go into the mountains. But you cannot see, my friend. How are you going to get through the mountains to the far off land? And Jumping Mouse said, Well, I have hope in my heart and I will find a way. And so Eyes of a Mouse went back into the plains and Jumping Mouse dug himself a little hole and curled up and took a little sleep. Well, when he woke up the next morning, Jumping Mouse came out of the hole and he couldn't look around because he couldn't see, but he could smell. <laughs> it was a fresh breeze. It smelled like pine trees. And he could feel a cool breeze coming down and brushing across his fur. And so he turned his nose toward that cool breeze and he started to hop up the mountain. But before too long, when he took a hop, and he came down, his paws did not land on the ground. In fact, they landed on fur. Well, Jumping Mouse hopped back in surprise and he <laughs> took a little sniff and <gasps> wolf, he froze. But then nothing happened. And Jumping Mouse crept forward a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then he heard, <sighs> Well, that sounded rather like someone crying a bit. And so Jumping Mouse said, Excuse me, Mr. Wolf, what are you doing? And the wolf said, well, I'm just lying here. And Jumping Mouse said, well, 
I'm going to the far off land. Might you be able to show me the way? And the wolves said, well, I wish I could. But you see, wolves find everything. We find our food, we find water, we find the way to go places by following our noses. And, well, I used to have a very good sense of smell, but I was proud and I misused it. And it was taken away from me and now I cannot smell at all. And so, <sighs> I am just lying here waiting to die. And Jumping Mouse said, well, Magic Frog named me Jumping Mouse and I gave my eyesight to eyes of a mouse. I do not know how much magic is left in me, but let me try and see. I would like to help you, Mr. Wolf. I name you Nose of a Mouse. And suddenly Jumping Mouse heard the wolf jump up and he heard him howl for joy and he heard him sniffing the pine scented breezes. But Jumping Mouse couldn't sniff the pine scented breezes anymore for he had given his sense of smell to nose of a mouse. Well, the wolf, he said, Jumping Mouse, you have helped me so very much. It does not matter how small you are. You said you would like to go to the far off land, right? Well, yes, Jumping Mouse said, I should like to go there. And Nose of a Mouse said, good, I will help you. Hop along beneath me and the shadows in the sky will not be able to find you and I will guide you to the far off land. And so Jumping Mouse did. He hopped along beneath Nose of a Mouse to the sound of the wolf's padding feet. And they went up and over the mountains and they came down on the far side. And Nose of a Mouse said, I am a creature of the mountains, so I cannot go to the far off land. Jumping Mouse, if you cannot see and you cannot smell, how are you going to live? And Jumping Mouse said, I do not know, but I have reached the far off land, and this is where I wanted to be. Do not worry, my friend, everything will be all right. And so Nose of a Mouse went back into the mountains, and Jumping Mouse, well, by this time he was rather tired, so he dug himself a little hole and he curled up and he went to sleep. But when he woke up the next morning, he crawled out of his hole. He listened. He could hear breezes. He could hear a trickle of water. And suddenly, Jumping Mouse began to feel a little afraid and a little sorry for himself. For you see, he had traveled all this way to get to the far off land to see how beautiful it was and he couldn't see it. And he had come all this way and he wanted to smell the beautiful breezes and the food and the, and, and the, and the trees and the, and the, and the, and the water and, and he couldn't smell it. And he wouldn't know how to find food because he couldn't see it and he couldn't smell it and he could follow the sound to water, but he wouldn't know if it was good water because he couldn't smell it. And he started to be a little afraid. However, was he going to survive? And he began to cry. Well, as he began to cry, suddenly he heard a voice from nearby. Jumping mouse, whatever is wrong? Magic frog? Is that you? Yes, it is. And Jumping Mouse, I am ever so proud of you. You kept hope alive in your heart and you have arrived at the far off land. And Jumping Mouse said, yes, but I gave my eyes, my sight to eyes of a mouse and I gave my smell, my sense of smell to nose of a mouse. How am I going to survive, Magic Frog? And Magic Frog said, I can help you with that. Jump, Jumping Mouse. Jump as high as you can and as hard as you can. Jump. And so Jumping Mouse did. He 
jumped as hard and as high as he could and he flew high, high, high up in the sky and he kept going and he kept going and he stretched out his arms and suddenly he felt strong and he felt powerful and he could see and he could smell all of the trees and the bushes and the water and the food below him. And from far below him, he heard Magic Frog calling, I give you a new name, Jumping Mouse. I name you Eagle, and you shall live in the far off land forever. And that is the story of Jumping Mouse from the Native Americans in the Plains. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you'll join us again. Now, next week on Monday is a holiday here in the United States, so we will not have a story on Monday, but we will be back on Wednesday of next week at 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time uh, with a new story from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you later. Bye.